In the last four videos, I've been talking about business, and in 40 minutes, I've pretty much packed a the work a working MBA into your mind. And uh, in that process, I've been saturating my kids, and uh, you know, I'm asking them, "Do you get it? Do you get it?" And they have questions. So what we do is I'm going to respond to the questions of my kids and try to make the that MBA that you've just assimilated a little more obvious. Okay, let's just take Global Village and let's look at what happens when um, when oil depletion hits this the company isn't really even in existence anymore. But let's assume it's just a average company with a couple hundred employees. If you remember, we had our income statement and um, we were, you start off with a hundred and these are all in percentages and we were running at 45% or 55% gross margins, which is very healthy. We had our sales guys running at seven, our marketing people running at eight, engineering was running at 10, um, GNA, which is finance and the president are running at five. And um, finally, ops was running also at five. And so this was 45 plus 15 is 60 plus 70 or 70, 80. And so we subtract all these from the top percentage and we get, we had 20% before. And then remember the federal government basically takes half. And so you have after tax. After, these are, after you've paid your taxes, you have 10%. And this number right here, is so pivotal to your stock price. Now what you do is, let's assume before we go into the stock price, let's assume that we've had a, just a tiny blip in oil depletion, just just a 5% change. So instead of running at our 55% gross margin, let's not even think about competition from Asia where they just blow us out and run at 5%, but let's, let's assume we're just getting an energy bump of knocking out 5% in gross margin, very small. If we want to hold that 10%, we've got to get rid of something in here. So what would happen is you you can't the prices went up. There's nothing you can do, and um, you don't want to raise your you don't want to raise your average selling price because then you know volume will go down. So you just cut. You just go into the company, and you cut. You, there's nothing fancy about it. You. Maybe lay off some salespeople and don't fly around as much and don't do as many promotions. You run less ads, you cancel projects, you thin out your finance department, run with less people. This is hard to cut because you, it's not, you have to keep moving the products out the door. But this, this is layoffs. This is 30% of expenses in business are people. We'd have layoffs. Maybe, maybe out of a 200 person company, we'd, we'd lay off 15 people and you have to run more efficient. Now Wall Street would look at this and they would they'd say, okay, they're still holding their number, but you know, once again, look at that. Engineering's not right, not as much. You're not promoting, you're not getting that brand name out there in ads. So you, you've thinned it out. Just a little teeny 200 person company, 15 person layoff. This is, this is gonna percolate through all businesses. Now, let's go to that, the share price. And what you want to do is you want Wall Street to view you, it's called a, a PE ratio, price to earnings ratio. And remember, okay, price is the share, the share price, and earnings is that goofy word, which means profit, which can, of course, they change it. But So you have price to earnings ratio. And in business, you want to get a nice number. that You want them to categorize you as a, vibrant organization. In our case, we had a PE of 20. We're a high tech company. We have uh, growth. We're selling more widgets and um, earnings. We, we were holding those earnings at 10% at the bottom. They'd like to see those numbers going up, but we were clicking, clicking along as a, as a high tech company, contrasting that to a train company, just a pretty sleepy organization. Nobody thinks that train companies are going to increase their earnings or profit or increase their volume. They're, they're as busy as they can. They're charging regular rates. So regular, regular companies, um, you know, infrastructure companies, maybe trucking or what have you, they run at 10. High tech runs a little hotter at 20. And, you, and like Yahoo, Google, and Microsoft, they aren't running the hundreds or 200s. They're just explosive with upside and earnings growth. But um, you don't want... You don't want these guys to categorize you in a different category. So that, 
that cut to engineering that they might if they put you down in the 15s your share price drops by 25 percent so you you're wanting to always impress them with your your ability to innovate and raise your sale, average sale price and your margins so um it in our case i want you to calculate your 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 share price it's it's a lot of gibberish and i don't want to go through it but you you basically in our case we were running at 10 cents a share so every um, every time that you would we would report our earnings we would say we made a dime okay and now with a 20 pe what we would do is we would multiply 20 into this and you would get on a on an annual basis we would have we have, this is 10 cents per quarter and so then we would do 40 cents a year 40 cents per share so this is a Q this is a year and then we had that 20 PE so they, they viewed us as a 20 PE and then it was real simple we just multiplied 20 times 40 and then our share price was eight bucks eight dollars a share so you we made a dime every share we made a dime now very rich companies I was watching Exxon and um, rich companies like, people that have a lot of cash if they don't think that Wall Street's viewing their share price good enough they buy shares they just go out and buy their own shares back and eliminate them because now with less shares you don't your your um, income to share improves so it's called a buyback and we little companies have no concept of buyback we're not rich but big companies if they don't like what Wall Street says they just use their cash to buy their own shares back I, I would love to work at a company where you can actually do a buyback it'd be a dream in my world to be at something where you're not broke so um, the 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 simple equation you've got to keep your earnings um, you, you've got to hold that 10% to the bottom line you've got to pray that your volume isn't dropping so you've got your average selling price and you've got your volume which is that's your total rev that's your total rev revenue and if you don't if this starts going down because people become poor you it's just not fun now you have another thing working against you one last thing about uh, uh, just a not a not a super great company like the big guys Cisco Exxon what have you if you remember that that just-in-time system was starting to screw up and the shortages of for example plastic was driving our cash down and our inventory up base inventory because we were piling up stuff in work in work in progress and um, so this inventory is going up once again when here's an interesting thing when Apple when Steve Jobs took over Apple he had an advantage that wasn't obvious he had five billion dollars in cash so he was able to make a ton of iPods and Macintoshes and iPhones because he had that cash that he could use to build up a lot of inventory so that little things like cash are really weapons but a little company we might only have five million dollars in cash and we could we could actually stall we could actually get to the point where we had so much inventory we couldn't we had to, our volumes have to drop because we didn't have enough cash to operate and if you don't if you're not powerful banks don't lend you money and Wall Street doesn't reward you so you just little guys can just start dying and um, the weak the weak will die it's survival of the fittest so um, that's kind of questions from my kids um, I uh, I'll take questions from the audience but um, oil depletion is not fun everything can start working against you and the little guys will die first so that's it I'll talk to you later